That's All right. Good. It's going to be Bauer or Barr and Wilkes in the circle. Wilkes, one of the key players for this Campbellsville team. And with a jump ball, it's basketball time here in Henderson as Satterley comes up with a jump ball. And Campbellsville, like we were talking about, playing that pressure defense here starting out as they go cross court to KJ. Satterley back with it over to KJ. Wide open, we'll go back out to Satterley. Shot clock down to 10 as Chumley goes out to Pervon. Pervon for three, no good. And it's going to be bored by Satterley. Satterley, two-point shot is good. No call on the shot there as Satterley gets the first two points of the game for the Lady Lions. As Lady Lions going to go straight to a 2-3 zone here. And they go down low to Wilkes. Wilkes wide open for two. Or excuse me, that was Pritchett. And Pritchett going to knock it down. Run that overload set 2-3 zone. Offense there, and Courtney Pritchett, first two points of the day for the Lady Tigers. And White goes top of the key to Satterley. Bauer with it over to Chumley. Satterley almost fumbles it and loses it. Barr dribbles in. Two-point shot, no good. Rebounded by Pedigo. Hey, Michael, right there you see the lay line is trying to take a little bit of air out of the game, slow it down a little bit, using up some shot clock. That's right. And that's going to be a big matchup down there today. Wilkes against Chumley as she goes over to Lee. Pritchett with it. And you notice Pervine on Pritchett. Pur Pervine probably the, I would consider one of the best defenders we have. That's right. And good defense there by both Chumley and Satterley. Forces that, the is shot. that Pedigo number, the, the redhead? Pedigo, yes, Pedigo, sir. okay, Pedigo. Oh, nice pass by KJ. KJ with it up at the wing. Go high post to Pervine, and that's going to be tipped out of bounds into the hands of Campbellsville. That's the right idea, though. I, I like that play where he's going down, try, cut the baseline, that's a turnover, but that's one you can live with if you're a coach. You're trying to get a great shot that's right. as Chumley was cutting the baseline. So Campbellsville comes back with the ball. All knotted up here at two as we reach the eight-minute mark here. Pedigo with it at the top. They go down low to Wilkes, and Wilkes double teamed, and she travel. is going to travel there. Lady Lions defense here connecting early. Got to like that defense down low. Double teaming down on the block, forced her into a situation where she had a lunge and traveled. That's right. So sadly with it up the top, K.J. White's going to get it, and looks like we're going to get a foul on the floor. Can't tell if that's going to be on Bull or – that's okay. They returned the favor by not by not calling the travel there on KJ. She took a I, jump stop. I, I didn't see it. You travel. didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Lauren Lee going to get called for the foul there, or excuse me, Pedigo going to get called for the foul. As they hit Chumley, and that's going to be stolen away by Pedigo. Pedigo spins around, and the shot is no good. But Chumley's going to get called for the foul. That's one of those. It's too early in the game. That, that's a that's a freshman mistake, really. Should have let her just go go to the rim, get the shot. But now Pedigo's got to earn two. That's right. And Pedigo on the season, don't think she is the best free throw shooter. Hey. As well, she makes that first one. As soon as you say that. And trying to get her percentage here. She made both of them. It was only was that seventy percent on the season right there. So Campbellsville takes a 4-2 lead as K.J. White comes up with it over to Satterley. Barr bounce to Satterley. Satterley through the defenders. K.J. White for three. Bang! Nice ball. Dribble drive by Rachel. They cut her off. Wide open K.J. for three. That's right. Now Lions lead. Lady Lions lead by one as Lauren Lee, one of the premier ball handlers in the Mid-South Conference, is going to drive this one in. Shot no good, and nice block out there by the Lady Lions as Satterley picks up another rebound. Chumley tapped that right to Satterley. And Le Campbellsville still bringing pressure as Satterley with it. They go over to Barr. Barr 
Blows by the defender, shot is no good, and that's rebounded by Wilkes. Nice drive though by Barr, just left a little bit short on the glass. And almost another steal by Barr. Campbellsville gonna try to slow this one down here just a little bit. And Lady Lions have gone back out of the zone to man to man. And call foul. Reach in on Satterley. It's gonna go against Rachel, she reached across the arm. Right idea, but exactly. just a little bit too much aggressive. Exactly, just a little bit aggressive. But Rachel's got to know she got, she's valuable and cannot get in foul trouble early in this game. That, that's exactly right. And we've and, seen that be a problem here in the last three games. So with Pedigo down in the corner, mismatch with Satterley and Wilkes. See what Campbellsville does on this one. So they try to go down low. They finally feed her. And that's her second. She's going. She, now, see, satellite has got to go now. As you had the mismatch on the baseline, Wilkes it was defended by Satterley. That's right. So here comes Kalia Fleming, the transfer from, I believe, what it's called, Wabash Valley. Wabash Valley. Wabash, 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 Wabash Valley. So she's going to get some minutes here for the Lady Lions as Caitlin Wilkes' first free throw is good. Wilkes coming in was only, I believe, 50. 57% shooting free throws on the year. And we see Campbellsville already coming up. Looks like they're going to try to press as that one is missed. And they stick with it. Looks like a two or one, two, one, one, if I'm not mistaken. And now they fall back man to man. After that initial pressure, they fell back. And KJ goes outside to Bregan Pervine. Pervine for three and no good. And that one's rebounded by Matty Bull. Hirsch goes alongside to Wilkes, and her shot is good. That time Wilkes ran the floor, got behind the defense, and was rewarded. That's right. And see Chumley goes middle right there as well as Barr, and they go back over to KJ. Nice movement here by the Lady Lions as Barr goes back out to KJ White. White takes this one in. That one's swatted away by Wilkes, and that one mm -hmm. knocked again. And that time... Lauren Lee going to take that one to the basket off of a nice Coach pass. Joshua, is he going to take a timeout? Nope, he's going to stay with it. Campbellsville extends their lead to four, nine run. to five. Seven to three run, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that is right. But you got to admire KJ. She's not afraid to take it in there against Wilkes. That's right. As Fleming takes this one in, KJ White pop up for three, and that one just short. It was online, just a little bit short. Again, that drive drew the defense, left KJ out there open. That's a shot she's got to take. That's right. And Coach Epson was saying, one key to win this game, you got to hit the outside shots against this team. They're going to give it to you. You need to take them. As that one taken by, looks like Bull is off. And we're going to go to a media timeout. That's right. And with this media timeout, let's take it with them live here on the Lion Digital Network, presented by Community Bank. My name is Nathaniel Sparks with Sparks Custom Fabrication. Back in October of last year, there was a huge storm that hit the city of Adamsville. We had a lot of damage to our roof and water damage. We called Golden Circle Restoration. They started tarping off and doing things that I didn't even know that needed to be done um, because we were in such a panic, basically, of not knowing you know, all the areas that we had lost. I'm so glad that I called Golden Circle Restoration and I'd recommend them to anyone. And we are back here on the Line Digital Network presented by Community Bank, Lady Lions. Currently down four here after the first media timeout. Lady Lions currently zero of their last four on field goals, scoring drought of 233. So hopefully Lady Lions can pick it up here as they will have the ball as Purbine will pass in to Fleming. And Lady Tigers back in that press. If Fried Hardeman gets it across half court, they'll drop back out of it. Good transition defense right there as Barr blows by the defender. Two-point shot 
no good and just a bad bounce off of the rim into the hands of Campbellsville. Lady Lions have had some good looks at the basket, just haven't been able to finish. That's right. And that one knocked out by Barr. And Lady Lions is on a cold streak and just can't can't get it going here. As Pedigo with it. As saw Kelsey Bender check in for the Lady Lions. Looks like number 23 is checked in for Campbellsville. Right. Kelsey nice Bender, job by nice. Bender. Probably should have been a foul, but it wasn't. And that's going to lead to a Campbellsville basket. At court, Courtney Pritchett? Uh, that no, was by not 22. Looks like Elizabeth Bertram. Extends the lead to six now for the Lady Tigers. KJ with it over to Barr. Inside to Purvine White, wide open three. And just no good, but rebound by Bender, and she puts it up for two. Good position there by Kelsey Bender. And that'll cut the lead to four now as Campbellsville brings it up the floor. Looks like Lions going to that 2-3 again. As KJ White with it outside to Bertram. Her shot, no good, rebounded by Barr. And Barr will take it up slowly over to KJ. They go corner to Purvine. And cross court to Barr, over to KJ. KJ takes this one in, and no He's got to call the flop. He's got to call – you've got to start calling the flop if they're going to fall down on a bump. That's right. And Kalia will take this one inside. Floater, no good. Rebounded by number 23, Lu Luby. I like it, though. She tried to use the glass knowing she had to adjust her shot. As Pedigo in the corner, back out to Lee. Lee over to Bertram. Pritchett's got it. She'll take it back out. Lady Lions just shooting 25%. That's right. And miscommunication there leads to a basket by, by Luby. 13 to 7 now your score. We've hit the two-minute mark here in the first quarter. As Purvine goes cross court to Bauer. Bauer for three. Bang! Lady Lions now two for six on three-pointers today. That'll keep you in the game. That's right. And they feed down low to Lee, and that one's going to be knocked away, but. Must have went off Bender's leg. Too bad we don't have instant replay. Well, we. Not yet, at least. We have capability to we do instant capability. replay. We just don't have enough hands to do instant <laughs> replay today. That's right. So, Campbellsville goes outside to believe that's number 14, Nally. They feed inside to Bertram, or excuse me, Luby, and Pervine gets called for the foul there. Looked like she was pretty well straight up right there. Yeah. That was good, really good defensive effort by Pervine, especially on the mismatch, but Luby's going to go to the line for two. First yeah. one's good. And Luby, I don't have, well, I do have stats for her, never mind. You couldn't find them? Couldn't find them. 69% on the season. I'll show you a secret at, at between quarters of how you can find that a whole lot faster. She's going to knock both of them down. Score now 15-10. to 10. The Lady Tigers of Camelsville up. That's Pervine with it. K.J. White over to Kalia Fleming. Fleming for three. Bang! And Coach S is down there getting a little excited at the at the three pointers. He's on the PA today. Yeah, I'm not sure where Matt is, but uh, got a lot of little little excitement there. That's right. And that shot by Pritchett, she could fill it up from out there, sir. That's right. Nice looking shot too. Score 18 to 13 as we now hit the one minute mark in the first quarter. Purvine, down low to Bauer in the corner. If that pass would have been chest high, she had time to set shoot. That's right. Well, Campbellsville going to check Bailey Pedigo back in for Lauren Lee. Going to give Lee a break after being playing the basically the whole first quarter there. Purvine over to Fleming. Now 15 on the shot clock. Fleming going to drive this one in. Nice pass out to KJ White. White over to Fleming. Fleming for three. Bang! 
That was nice. That, that was, was nice. K- uh, Kalia drives, kicks to KJ. KJ puts it on the floor, and Kalia gets right to the corner. KJ finds her and converts to a, into a three-point play. That's right. Well designed, well executed. Shot clock is dead as now we hit 10 seconds as Pedigo. They look for the mismatch. And Pedigo is going to take a wide open three and no good. And that one's going to be out of bounds. Lions are going to have a chance with three seconds here. 3.7 seconds. See what they draw up here as they go to Fleming. And she got to get a shot up. And, oh, just couldn't get it to go. Great effort, though, by the Lady Lions, making three out of their last three to end the first quarter. Scores 18 to 16. Campbellsville is up. We're going to take a break and be back with second quarter action live here on the Lion Digital Network presented by. Contractors is your local full-service construction company. From kitchen and bathroom renovations or room additions to a complete custom home or commercial building. No matter the size of your construction needs, trust Elite, completing your circle of service. And we are back here as the Campbellsville Lady Tigers will have possession to start the second quarter. And they fade inside to Luby as they go back out. Shot is no good by number 24, Sutton, Sarah Sutton. Sarah, I believe, one of the better three-point shooters on uh, this Lady she Tigers has, team. She has started for them in the past, or at least played a lot off the bench, if I'm remembering, maybe last year. And KJ goes to the basket, no good, as Chumley picks back up. She's going to go, go up. up and there gets the basket go. to fall. Against four. <laughs> four Quadruple points. team, and she still puts it up and in the hoop. So just like that, we're all tied up now in the Brewer Sports Center as Pedigo will take this one down. And they're trying to find that mismatch, and they finally get it down to LeBay. And LeBay going to get the basket to fall. And I believe... Chumley just didn't have her feet set. Got, got, got her with the body. The hands were in the correct position, but uh, what would you say her name? That's going to be – I think I'm saying that right. Luke. Luby. 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 She just kept her feet moving, and she pivoted in the body contact. Gotcha. So that gives Campbell's really a two-point lead as she tries to make it three, and she does. Campbell's – Campbellsville's not missed a free throw, have they? Uh, they missed one. Missed one. So they're. Yeah, I that was by Wilkes. Okay. And so KJ with it as she hands off to Pervine over to Fleming. They feed Bender. Bender will go back out to Fleming. And nice bounce pass over to KJ. They go back to Kalia. Kalia, short corner to Bender. Nice pass over to KJ. Back over to Fleming. Fleming is going to go out to Pervine. Pervine for three. And that one's just short, and that's just a nice block out by Pedigo. Yeah, good, good job right there defensively by Campbellsville. And so they go down low, Bender against Wilkes, and that shot is good. Not much they you just, can do they just, that. they just back you down and put it up and in. That's just size. That we, We're lacking a little bit of, of that type of size down low. That's right. As Bender goes out to K.J. White, Campbellsville now takes the lead by five with that basket. As Kalia will go back out to KJ and Bender with it. Out to Kalia Fleming. Fleming for three. And that one not able to go as we're going to get a jump ball. 
in favor of Freed Hardman. Yeah, that's the, 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 the size advantage down low for Campbellsville. We've got some size. They're just all sitting down there on the end of the bench with injuries. Yeah, that's right. And like, like Angelina Barr. Uh, Kaylee Oldham. And you've got Briley Bone that's uh, still there. You've got some, you've got some size, but like I say, they're, they're recovering from injuries. I think all three of those are red shirts this year. And Barr for three. Bang! What? I mean, what can you say? The Lady Lions are just uh, well, playing great offense right now. Three-point field goals, that's five for 11 if I'm correct. Yeah, that would be five because they did hit four in that first half, or first quarter, I mean. So here we go with, I can't tell who that is down low, and that one's going to be knocked out of bounds by Bender. And Bender's nice like, defense. Why did I just grab nice that? defense. Well, I don't think she could have come up with it. I think she made the only play she could knocking it out of bounds. But that's a great, great defense right there. Now you got to force Campbellsville to pass the ball in as they feed it inside to Lee Pritchett and forces the pickup as they go back out to Lauren Lee, back over to Courtney Pritchett, and that shot is blocked by Madison Barr. And Oh, no, 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 no. Looked like she may have got her arm yanked out of socket. But look at look at her walk over there behind the bench. Look at he's shaking it off Carter. This is like Carter Welch out there playing for Chester County High School. And the foul is going to be on Maddie Bull. Don't believe it's going to be an intentional foul. And kind of forces coach's hand to bring Satterley back in. So and she's got to be cautious. She's got two fouls. That's uh, Ellie Chumley sits over there with two fouls. So here we go with Kalia. Back over to Saturday. Saturday over to Kalia Fleming. Back over to KJ White. White will take this one in. And she's going to put it up for two, and she gets Good. it to fall. Nice, nice job by uh, KJ White. I thought she was going to kick it out to Saturday. Campbellsville bringing the, bringing the heat with the pressure as that shot is good by number 22, Elizabeth Bertram. Campbellsville not wasting any time getting it down the floor on that one. No, that's the, they want that they want that speed. That's right. Sally brings it back out over to KJ White. She's got it. We'll take this one inside. And she traveled. And she they got her that time. Her momentum kept her moving forward, and there's not much you can do. About no, it. not not at all. It's but I will credit KJ White determination to take the ball in into the middle she's not going back down no she's we've seen. she she might only be five foot five but she plays like she's six foot five exactly right so Cowsville well, that may one. not be her exact height I may be exaggerating I, 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 I think that is right is that one no good by Bertram picked up by KJ white Kalia Fleming will take this one back over as they hand off to KJ. Kalia being double teamed back off to KJ White. Nice feed inside to Bender and good pass out to Fleming. Fleming for three and that one no good and Pervine just couldn't get a hand on Pervine it. Pervine tried to tip it out but went right to a Campbellsville player. And nice defense here by the Lady Lions as Pritchett. They feed inside to Wilkes and Wilkes shot no good and that one rebounded. By and if Wilkes, no if Wilkes would not have touched the ball, it would have been Campbellsville ball. But as soon as the ball, she put her hand on the ball and pinned it to the line. But if you're Wilkes in that it's, situation, uh, yeah, you're, you gotta, you're, yeah, exactly. I'm not faulting her for that. It just, that just is how sometimes it happens. And still, see Madison Barr over there talking with the trainer. Doesn't uh, she's coming? She's coming back. That's right. So KJ. With it, we'll hand back off to Satterley. Fleming with it, over to Satterley again. Satterley being double teamed, over to Fleming. And Satterley gonna try to do something with it here, over to KJ, over to Bender, here shot. Just couldn't roll in. Hey, that's all she could do. Nice, nice little jumper there in, in the mid range. And Wilkes. Or Pritchett's on Pervine, and that shot no good. Rebounded by Pervine over to K.J. White. 
We are now past the halfway mark. Next dead ball will be a timeout. And Today is a good day to be a Wildcat. I believe the 60. 61. Right now it's 62-56 with 4.8 seconds left in Knoxville. Nice move by Sally. Just couldn't get it to go as we're going to get a jump ball, and that's going to go in favor of Campbellsville. I will say that's a good call. He should have called that probably a moment sooner. But anyway, we got a timeout. Uh, with that timeout, we'll take it with them live here on the Lion Digital Network presented by Community Bank. Contractors is your local full-service construction company. From kitchen and bathroom renovations or room additions to a complete custom home or commercial building. No matter the size of your construction needs, Trust Elite, completing your circle of service. And we are back here on the Line Digital Network presented by Community Bank. Lady Lions, halfway through the second quarter, only down three, 26-23 your score. And still do not have an update on the condition of Barr. Well, never mind, I think we do. Uh, yeah, I think we definitely have it now, definitive. I think probably when she got the steal and had her arm up, her arm probably got pulled back and may have popped a shoulder, but – Let's see what she can do as she comes back in. And Lady Lions looks like they're going to go full man-to-man -man here as Pritchett with it being guarded by Barr. And pass over to Lauren Lee. Lauren Lee going to hand it off to Pritchett. Pritchett over to Bertram. Bertram. They go to the combo, Pritchett and Wilkes, and Barr going to kick that one away. Four on the shot clock. Oh, and they, they, that was a yeah. kickball, so they put 20 back on. That's right. I think Everson's saying, can we keep it at four? Yeah, I think you're <laughs> right. I'm... And so pass in over to – over there to Bertram. Lauren Lee's got to get the screen by Wilkes. And mismatch right there. Gets the basket to fall. I'll tell you what, Wilkes has – hey. She's got a nice touch down there on the glass. It just lays it up off the glass good. That's right. And coming into the game, Wilkes was leading the conference in field goal percentage, I believe. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, Kayla Wilkes first in field goal percentage. It's K.J. White for three and just couldn't get it to fall. <clears throat> just rolled off. So, Campbellsville running the floor here. <clears throat> see what they do here on offense as they get the screen. That was going to be short. That as time, K.J. went under when she probably should have went over the screen and instead gave up the wide open shot. That's right. Sadly with it now. Leyline's going to run a little five out action here with Bender cutting in for the one. Thought for a minute Campbell's would have gone to his own, but no, they're just in a, in a matchup. They're playing man to man. That's right. And with five seconds on the shot clock, here comes Fleming for three. Bang! <laughs> Fleming. That gives her nine. Nine. Three for three for six from three-point range. Three. Yeah, you're out three Is that for right? six. Three for seven on the field had that one miss yep. floater, but. but I'll tell you what, that's huge for her to come off the bench and give you production is that time that shot rolls off. That's right. And we got a jump ball, and we're gonna go in look, favor of the lady lions. Look who's down there in the middle of it, though. <laughs> KJ Watt. Would you expect anyone any different? Nope. I would not. And checking in for Campbellsville, you're going to see Wilkes and Bertram go out. Looks like 23. That's Luby. Luby. And didn't see the other one that checked in. Looked like it might have been 24, Sarah Sutton. Or, or correction, four. Or did four check back in. It, might have, it was Bailey Pettigo. That's what I – And K.J. with it now at the top of the key. You notice KJ. how they're extending their defense out? Saturday. Bang! You know how Campbell's you, – you notice what they're doing. They are forcing the Lady Lions out 
beyond the arc, and the Lady Lions are making them pay. That's right. When they get it, drive it down in, and there's the basket up and in by Luby. Just sorry to call out, to take all your time. Oh, there. you're good. You're good. But uh, just bad position there by uh, Bender gave, gave Luby just basically a wide open shot right there. I mean, you, you see, they're a good five, six feet beyond the three point line until somebody drives, and then they collapse. KJ White, what can you do about that? KJ White, another two point basket. This is turning out to be a good one here as Campbellsville comes up with the ball. They feed out to Bailey Pedigo. Pedigo goes over to Lauren Lee, and they can't hit the down low. Sarah Sutton as Pritchett with it. Pritchett over to Lee. Lee being guarded by White. Her shot, no good. Rebounded by well, it's going to be off of. Campbellsville says the referee. Last first touch it was Kelsey Bender, unless yeah. it bounced off the. I guess it bounced off of Pedigo there. It's the only thing I can think. I, I, I was wondering the same thing. I wasn't going to say anything, but. <laughs> so, Saturday has got it over to KJ, and now Fleming is going to get KJ back at the top of the key. Fleming can't feed the corner, so they go back to KJ. Bender, nice post move. And pass out to Satterley over to Fleming. Fleming for another three. And Kayla Alvin to fall as Bowers got it. Her two-point shot is good. That's a nice job by the Lady Lions. That is. And now 38 seconds left to go here. Second half, or the first half. I wish it was second half. I, I do too, Michael. <laughs> yeah. I do too. They hit Lauren Lee out to Courtney Pritchett. Pritchett gets the screen and can't get it on Fleming as Pedigo That's tries great. to drive in. Nice defense there by the Lady Lions. That's right. And they feed back out to Pedigo. Her shot is good. You can't, you, you can't give that much space. That time Madison collapsed a little bit. That's right. So now we got seven seconds. Fleming with it. Over to Bauer. Bauer for three. And no good. Rebounded by Luby. And they're just going to let that one roll out. What a half of basketball right What do you there. say right there? I, I don't know what you can say. Uh, that, was a, that was a great half of basketball. We're tied with the number four team heading in to the second half. So we're going to take a timeout, let you listen to some of our sponsors and let you look at some of our sponsors who make this broadcast possible. And we'll take a timeout with them live here on the Lion Digital Network presented by Community Bank. Community Bank is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Lion Digital Network at Freed Hardeman University. Community Bank is a local, customer-focused bank where our communities come first. We have four convenient locations to serve your needs in Henderson, Jackson, and two in Lexington, along with 24-hour mobile banking online and in our app. Community Bank cares about you. And that's what makes us significantly different. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Elite Contractors is your local full-service construction company. From kitchen and bathroom renovations or room additions to a complete custom home or commercial building. No matter the size of your construction needs, trust Elite, completing your circle of service. At First Bank, we tell our customers to bank local and get more. But everyone's more is different. Is yours more adventure? More space, more education, or work that's more you. We always say bank local, get more. More product range, more accessible bankers, and a whole lot less standing in your way. Whatever you're more, you can now get more excited because we got this. My name is Nathaniel Sparks with Sparks Custom Fabrication. Back in October of last year, there was a huge storm that hit the city of Adamsville. We had a lot of damage to our roof and water damage. We called Golden Circle Restoration. They started tarping off and doing things that I didn't even know that needed to be done um, because we were in such a panic, basically, of not knowing you know, all the areas that we had lost. I'm so glad that I called Golden Circle Restoration and I'd recommend them to anyone. Welcome to Henderson, Tennessee, where the pine trees are tall and the barbecue is smoking. We're smack dab in between the birthplace of rock and roll and music city. But you want to know what it's like to become an FHU Lion? The truth is, becoming part of the pride looks different for everyone. But we're all here for something. 
We're here to manage a million dollar investment portfolio. I'm here to compete to be the conference player of the year. I'm here to become a photographer. I'm here to become a minister. We're here for devotionals and fellowship with friends by the fire. I'm here for the research-based psychology program. I'm here to become a registered nurse. I'm here for the best barbecue in the South. I'm here to help my team excel in the Mid-South Conference. I'm here to become a teacher. I'm here to create software that empowers people to reach their goals. We are here to develop leadership skills and lifelong friendships. I'm here to become a CPA and a national champion. I'm here to earn my degree and commission into the United States Army. I'm here to cast and direct my own senior theater production. I'm here to prepare for law school. I'm here to learn how to direct a music program. I'm here from Brazil to become an All-American. I'm here for the oldest honors college in Tennessee. I'm here for all of that and more. Where's your place in the tribe? Freed Hardeman, 41, and we'll say 42% shooting in the first half. 13 of 31 overall. 7 of 17 from long range. That's 41% there as well. And uh, they did not take a free throw there in the first half of play. Game's leading scorer is Kayla Luby. She and Kalia Fleming both with nine points. So we'll say uh, Luby here. Three of five from the floor. Made all three of her free throw shots and three rebounds there in seven minutes of play for the transfer. Campbellsville got seven from Caitlin Wilkes. Three of five shooting for Wilkes in the first half. Five points from three Lady Tigers. Bailey Pedigo had five, including that last three there of the first half. Three rebounds and assist and a steal. Five for Courtney Pritchett. She is now up to 924 points in her Lady Tiger career. Two rebounds for Swiss with an assist. And Elizabeth Bertram had five as well. Two of four shooting for Burt. One rebound. Two points from Lauren Lee. Two boards, three assists from Lee there in the first half. And uh, that rounds out the scoring for the Lady Tigers. Maddie Boyle, Maddie Nally, and Sarah Sutton all see time and fail to score in the first half. For Freed Hardman, led in scoring by Kalia Fleming. She had nine, which matched Kayla Luby for the uh, game high. Three of eight from Fleming. Three of seven from deep. So all three of her makes coming from beyond the arc. Fleming on the... Uh, season here averages 4.7 points a game and uh, I've got a typo on my call sheet here with her three point percentage so I'll have to look that up uh, to see exactly where she's at in terms of three point shooting but a nice first half for her eight points for Madison Barr three of seven shooting four rebounds seven off the fingers of KJ White two boards three assists Five points from Rachel Satterley in the ball game. Satterley was saddled with fouls early, but uh, Coach Epperson throws her back out there, and she's able to navigate her way through the remainder of the half without picking up that third. Ellie Chumley and uh, Kelsey Bender with two points each. Reagan Purvine, the only player for Freed Hardeman to see time and fail to score as they go just seven deep there in the, uh, the first half. For... Campbellsville, in terms of rebounding, they have 15 total rebounds. Two on the offensive end. Freed Hardman finishes with 18 rebounds, five on the offensive end. Lady Tigers, six assists, one steal, one turnover. Freed Hardman, eight assists, zero steals, and three first half turnovers. Enhanced scoring, some big numbers here. Points in the paint, 14 to 12, in favor of the Lady Tigers. Off turnovers, 2-0 in favor of CU. Here's the biggest one. Second chance, 11-2 in favor of Freed Hardeman. And bench points, 14-11 in favor of the Lady Tigers. Score was tied five times. The lead changed hands six times in the first half. Largest uh, advantage for Campbellsville was six. For Freed Hardeman, their largest advantage, three. Coming late in the first half, of course, Bailey Pedigo would tie it up with that three-point Edward Jones make. And that is uh, that's where we stand here at halftime. Campbellsville and Freed Hardeman all tied at 33 points apiece. The Lady Tigers back in action 
next week as uh, they will host a couple of Tennessee teams in the Powell Athletic Center on Thursday night. Cumberland University will come to the Powell Center 5.30 to start there for Campbellsville and UT Southern on Saturday, a 1 p.m. start as both of those will be your uh, typical Mid-South Conference doubleheaders with uh, the Tiger basketball team following. Halftime here at the Brewers Sports Center in Henderson, Tennessee. We'll step away, take a timeout, an extended break here, and uh, come back shortly and bring you second half action. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the KHSAA and the Kentucky High School Athletic Directors Association. Pursue a diverse and rewarding career through Campbellsville University's School of Mass Communication. Offering courses in film, journalism, broadcasting, and public relations, CU's Mass Communication program provides a diverse and unique experience for each student. At Campbellsville University's dedicated Mass Communication Center, produce, record, and edit programs for radio and TV. With state-of-the-art technology, equipment, and multiple studios, CU's new facility provides a professional environment for students to grow their knowledge with hands-on experience. In front of or behind the camera, our expanded course options will help you find your calling at Campbellsville University's School of Mass Communication. For more information, contact us at 270-789-5210 or visit us online at campbellsville.edu. Press play on your career with a mass communication degree at Campbellsville University. What's your favorite high school sports memory? A late inning rally? A game winning shot? A photo finish? Maybe it's a pep rally or a pregame ritual. Maybe it's the euphoria of a late night bus ride home after a hard fought win. Maybe it's having pizza with teammates after the game. Now, imagine if it never happened at all. School sports need your help. With budgets getting tighter, it's more than the games that are on the line. It's all the traditions, the community pride, the culture of your hometown high school, plus all those memories that are on the line, too. What can you do? It's simple. Buy a ticket when you can. Go to a game. Take the whole family. Let's do everything we can to keep those cherished school sports memories alive. This message presented by the Kentucky High School Athletic Association and the Kentucky High School Athletic Directors Association. The call of today's sportscast has been made possible by CPR Cell Phone Repair. Boasting a selection of pre-owned phones, tablets, and more, CPR is not just an electronics repair shop. CPR Cell Phone Repair on the web at cellphonerepair.com. A gift from Campbellsville Baptist Church has made this broadcast possible. Sunday school starts at 9.15. Worship service starts at 10.30. On the web at campbellsvillebaptistchurch.com. Citizens Bank and Trust has provided funding to make today's sportscast possible. The CBTKY mobile app can be found in the App Store or Google Play. Citizens Bank and Trust says go Tigers. Member FDIC. We acknowledge Kellner Contracting for their continued support of Tiger Athletics. Featuring Tempstar heating and cooling products, Kellner Contracting proudly offers free estimates on new systems. On the web at kellnercontracting.com. Today's coverage of Tiger Athletics has been made possible by Taylor County Bank. Online banking options and three community locations are designed to better serve you. Taylor County Bank, Taylor County's only locally owned bank. This portion of our Tiger basketball broadcast has been funded by Taylor County Farm Bureau Agency Manager Darren Price. 
local agents, local service. Best of luck, Tigers, from Taylor County Farm Bureau Agency Manager Darren Price. Champions of Character connects communities and the NAI championships across the United States. All 26 plus NAI championship student athletes participate in a teaming up for character activity. These activities are geared toward local communities, youth in schools and community centers. They are an integral part of every NAIA championship annually, impacting more than 25,000 individuals. For more information on character-driven collegiate athletics, head to NAIA.org forward slash character. Tiger sports fans, tickets for your favorite in-season Tiger teams are on sale now. On the field or in the gymnasium, Campbellsville University gladly welcomes you. As a reminder for your game day visit, the H&W Sports Shop has all the latest CU apparel. Look for the tickets tab at CampbellsvilleTigers.com and secure your seat today. The National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics is home to over 65,000 student athletes and 250 colleges and universities. The NAIA hosts over 25 championships across North America. Our 21 conferences give out $600 million in athletic scholarships annually. The NAIA prides itself on character-driven athletics. Learn how you can become a part of the NAIA by visiting NAIA.org. Coverage of Lay Tiger basketball continues on the Keltner Contracting Halftime Report. Getting set to begin second half action here in just a moment. Matt Payton with you in Henderson, Tennessee. The Lady Tigers uh, will, uh, I believe, conclude their Tennessee portion of the schedule here today. Uh, they'll go to Ohio a couple of times for Shawnee State and Wilberforce, but uh, no more trips to the state of Tennessee in the regular season, the Mid-South Conference uh, tournament held in Bowling Green. So this will be their final game in the Volunteer State uh, here this year, the uh, Lady Tigers and Freed Hardman, one of six Mid-South Conference games on the slate today. Shawnee State trailing Georgetown big. That game uh, nearing a final. Pikeville got a two-point win over Cumberland's at the Old Wayne Rollins Center in Williamsburg. So Coach Clifton Williams and his bunch pick up, excuse me there, a big win, 72. Uh, they knock off Cumberland's, and that will move Pikeville ahead of Cumberland's. That will give Cumberland's their fourth loss in conference play, and uh, Pikeville will move to 9-3 and three in conference action. So big win there for the Bears as they slide up to the third spot in the uh, league standings for the time being. Here an early deflection knocked out of bounds by Freed Hardeman as Campbellsville on the offensive end to start this second half. And uh, long pause there as the basketball went down behind the uh, bench and kind of a hallway down there, similar to maybe the, the Powell Center. Campbellsville to work here with the basketball. Lauren Lee feeds inside, has Wilkes. She gets the finish. Lauren Lee, the fine, 35-33. Campbellsville up by two. I was a little surprised Lee let that pass go. There was some traffic, but went uh, right in front of the rim to Wilkes. And, uh, man, nice setup there by Lauren Lee. Out front, Satterley with the ball fake. Now left side to Baher. Hervine out. Satterley a contested three, and that is no good. Pedigo taps it out, but K.J. White able to control it. Here is Baher left wing, and that is good for Madison Baher. So the second chance opportunities for Freed Hardeman coming in play again. Boyle, the entry to Wilkes, catches and goes up. She's fouled, and we'll see who gets the foul here. If uh, it's Chumley and Satterley both in the area, somebody's getting their third, and it's going to be on Ellie Chumley. So the third on Chumley. So Coach Epperson will ask for an explanation. Here Wilkes at the line, free throw good for Kit Kat as her teammates call her. Second free throw on the way, good. So Wilkes gets both. 
37-36 your score. 8.50 to play third quarter. Satterley the basketball. White on around. Baher left wing way out now. She's chased by Pritchett and Lee. White at the elbow. Kicks it to Satterley. She'll drive. Bounces one inside Pervine, and she's fouled by Wilkes, who's just a bit late getting over. And for Caitlin Wilkes, that is her first. First on Campbellsville, and this sends Reagan Pervine to the line, 77% on the season. Free throw here, good. Freed Hardeman's uh, losses in league play have come to Campbellsville, Cumberland, Cumberlands, and Thomas Moore. As Pervine misses the second, we are tied here at 37 after one of two. Lauren Lee working. Hands it to Maddie Boyle. A little screen there from Wilkes out front. Now Pritchett off the wing. Lee, a dribble, back out. Pritchett, three on the way. That is hard, and the rebound taken in by K.J. White for Freed Hardman. Lady Lions ahead, looking for points. Bender left side. She checked in for Chumley, who picked up that foul a moment ago. Inside. Bender working the inline. Nice offense as Pervine find, uh, finds her in the middle. Bender cutting inline, able to get around Wilkes and go reverse. 39-37. Boyle on the wing. Bounces to Pritchett. Boyle left side. Pedigo. Back to Pedigo in the corner. She'll drive inline. Cut off. Need some help. Has Pritchett. There's the entry. Wilkes quickly. Pass deflected. Pedigo picks it up. Five to shoot. Campbellsville got to go quickly. And, and Ginger High Colvin took a timeout there with two seconds. I didn't uh, hear that uh, timeout call. I'm right beside her, but she must have got it to uh, the official there. And with two on the shot clock, Campbellsville will have to draw something up that works rather quickly. 731 to play in the third quarter, 39-37, Freed Hardeman by two. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. With more than 80 majors and certifications, Campbellsville University offers students an affordable higher education in a Christian setting. Located in the heart of Kentucky, Campbellsville University boasts eight regional centers across the Commonwealth. Our 13 to 1 student professor ratio provides a small classroom environment allowing professors to work closely with the students. To schedule a visit or apply, go online to campbellsville.edu. Come find your calling at Campbellsville University. Complete coverage of Lady Tiger basketball continues on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. 39-37, the Lady Tigers trail Freed Hardeman. In Henderson, Matt Payton with you. Campbellsville in this second half here. Has seen uh, Freed Hardeman score six quick ones. Lady Tigers with two to shoot. Lauren Lee on that far side. She'll inbound. See what they get here. Lee looking back door for Pedigo. Boyle in the corner. Step back jumper on the way. Short rebound to K.J. White. So the Lady Tigers get a look. Not a great one. I think they initially wanted Bailey Pedigo on that back door. Here driving in White. Shovels one up. No good. Ball knocked out. And Wilkes will finally control. Lee wants to run. Middle of the floor. Stops. Trailer is Wilkes. Three on the way. Bang! Caitlin Wilkes and Edward Jones three showing off the range. Got to tell the story on Wilkes. I don't know if we uh, told it yet. I believe it was after the St. Thomas game. Wilkes hit a, a maybe two threes in that game, and she found me after the game. She said, "Did you say bang?" Yes, indeed. One more from Wilkes, who uh, continues to shoot it extremely well for the Lady Tigers, both inside and out. Bow needs some help. Pervine left side, three to shoot. White step back over Boyle. Three on the way is an air ball. It'll go out of play. Campbellsville gets it back. They've got the one-point lead with 6.30 to play in the third quarter. Bertram will check in for Boyle. Pedigo and Lee in the back court. In the front court, you've got Pritchett, Wilkes, and Bertram lined across the floor. 
Bertram will come near side. They'll go Wilkes off that far elbow as Campbellsville's going right to left here in the second half. Pritchett out front, Bertram. Now Lee backs away on the dribble. Pritchett off the wing, won't shoot it. Lee, one dribble, back out, Pritchett again. Nine seconds, it's Pettigo. Pettigo wanted Wilkes, she's not there. Has Pritchett, four seconds. Wilkes gonna have to go quick, throws a little hook shot, no good. Pettigo rebound, the putback won't go. Satterley is tied up by Bailey Pettigo. And the arrow, I believe, will go to Freed Hardeman. Pettigo hits that in her sleep. Maybe rushed it just a bit. 40 to 39. Satterley on the dribble out front. Nearly lost the handle as Pritchett pounds her out front. Pervine, one of the back door, not there. She's working against Lee. Now out, Barr, three on the way. That is good. Madison Barr, another three-pointer. 37% on the season. Freed Hardeman having a nice afternoon from deep. Lee goes to Pritchett. Entry here. White gambles, doesn't get there. Wilkes will quip, rip through and gets the finish. Caitlin Wilkes. Sixteen all of a sudden here for Wilkes. It took me a minute to find the numbers. Wilkes, uh, the big second half already here inside. They set up Bender, and Kelsey Bender gets the field goal. Lee left side, Pritchett. Now Bertram, and that ball's kicked by Baher as Bertram tried the bounce pass entry to Wilkes at halftime. Wilkes had seven, so she's got nine second half points already. Six of nine shooting. And with 4.47 on the clock, we'll have a media stoppage here. Third quarter, Campbellsville trails 44-42, 4.47 to play in the period. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Tiger sports fans, tickets for your favorite in-season Tiger teams are on sale now. On the field or in the gymnasium, Campbellsville University gladly welcomes you. As a reminder for your game day visit, the H&W Sports Shop has all the latest CU apparel. Look for the tickets tab at CampbellsvilleTigers.com and secure your seat today. Thanks for following Lady Tiger Basketball. Now let's get you back to the action on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. 44-42, Matt Payton with you in Henderson. Lady Tigers trailing by two points here to Freed Hardman. We rode over yesterday morning. Both the Tigers and Lady Tigers had a uh, little shoot around, walk through yesterday. And we uh, got into the Brewer Sports Center here. And it was somewhere between, I'm guessing, 55 and 60 degrees in this gym. It was as cold as I've ever seen it in a gym. Uh, or felt it, I guess, and uh, I went to shoot around with the guys on Thursday morning, and it was so cold in here yesterday that I didn't even stay for the guys shoot around, and uh, come to find out, they had a part that was out here, Sutton quickly, the inbounds, tries a shot, it's blocked by Bender, gets it right back, however, but uh, the good news is today they got it fixed, uh, had the heat issue, Sutton out top, passes on that three, Bertram, Needs some help. Finally gets it into Pritchett. She'll go to work between two defenders. Courtney Pritchett gets the lay-in. Bender was awfully uh, cavalier there in her defensive approach. Kind of let Pritchett get through rather easily. Tied at 44. If you're a Lady Tiger fan, you're hoping the well goes dry at some point on these threes that uh, Freed Hardeman has hit. May have been a walk there by Fleming. Got away with it. Barr going to rip through, go baseline, and she stepped on the inline. So a turnover here on... Freed Hardeman as uh, Campbellsville forces her deep. Campbellsville with a basketball here, just over four minutes to play in the quarter. Lauren Lee out of the lineup here for CU. Pedigo orchestrates the offense. Wilk Stalk sets the screen. Sutton out front, left side Bertram. Bertram to Sutton. Now Pedigo will motion Bertram through. Wants Pritchett. Can't get it to her. Barr takes away every angle. Now Bertram 
Will takes the jumper. Good for Elizabeth Bertram. They were worried about the entry. Sagged off a bit as Burt caught it. They kind of backed down to take away, uh, sagged down to take away the entry, and Bertram just cans that elbow jumper. 46-44, Campbellsville back up by two. Satterley going to take a three over Bertram. Good for Rachel Satterley. 47-46, Freed Hardman back up by a point. Ten made threes in the ball game for Freed Hardeman today. Pritchett out top. Bertram will drive, working against Fleming. Gets around her. Shot up, won't go, but she draws the foul here against Kalia Fleming. And this will send Bertram to the free throw line. Chumley and K.J. White back in. Kayla Luby will enter. Caitlin Wilkes gets the breather for Campbellsville. Lauren Lee would... Check in for Bertram on a made second free throw. Bertram, 75% on the season, hits that first. Second free throw for Bert is good as well. And Bertram today with nine points. She'll check out. Lauren Lee back in. Campbellsville with the one-point advantage. Lee pressure Satterley. Now White drives in. Blocked from behind by Pritchett. Here comes Pedigo. Pedigo ahead. Has to keep it free of White. They mix up. Open three for Pedigo is no good. They got crossed up. White pressure down the floor. And then when we got to, uh, got to the three-point line, just kind of left Bailey. Nobody was there. Bailey shot the wide-open jumper. Just left it a little short. Satterley spins back off the screen from Chumley. Now Pervine gets past Sutton. They dump it down inside to Chumley, and she gets the bucket off the window. 49-48. Lee out front between the circles on the dribble. Pedigo works through left side. Pritchett out front. Entry. Luby spins. Shot up. No good. Sutton rebounds. She's fouled by Satterley, and that's going to be three on Rachel Satterley. She uh, played with those two for the longest time here, finally getting the third. Three on Freed Hardeman as a team, and Madison Barr going to reenter for the Lions. Barr's had the hot hand full team today for Freed Hardeman to lead the way. Sutton at the free throw line here for CU. Free throw good. Sarah's first point of the point of the day here. Second free throw good as well. And Maddie Boyle will check in for Sarah Sutton here. So for Campbellsville, we've got uh, most of the starting unit out there. Luby in for Wilkes at the time being. The only change to that thriving starting five. KJ White on the dribble. Steps back. Now Pervine. Hands it to Barr. Barr wants to drive. She's cut off by Pritchett. Pervine working against Pedigo. Spins in the middle. Tries to thread the needle. Chumley saves it, however. Out top. Barr is open. Three on the way. No good. With three on the shot clock, Luby grabs the rebound. She's tied up quickly by Pervine. The arrow points to Campbellsville with 127 to play in the period. Campbellsville by one. They can extend. Largest lead for the Lady Tigers today with six points. Lee. Pritchett out front. Left side, Pedigo. They want Luby. Can't get it to her as they sag off a bit. Now Pedigo open. Three on the way. Bang! Bailey, Pedigo, another Edward Jones. Pay out. 53-49. One minute to go. Third quarter. White crosses the timeline. Lauren Lee there for CU. Right side, Chumley on around into the corner. Fleming wants to drive, cut off by Boyle. Now Chumley into the middle of the lane. Kicks it to White, who has to jump up and catch it. Pervine with eight to shoot. Back door, not there for Fleming. Now Baher decks it. She'll drive in, throws up a floater. No good. Rebound. Pedigo tries to keep it free and does. Now Pedigo sprints ahead quickly. The Lady Tigers will, uh, let's see, shot clock not off. There's about a two-second differential between the shot clock and game clock, maybe three seconds. 
Lauren Lee will dribble out front. Campbellsville will try to go late, not give Freed Hardman a chance. Pedigo out top, Boyle. Four seconds to shoot. Lee drives, step back, jumper, no good. Did it hit the rim? The guys underneath, it was a play on. Pedigo had the rebound. Did it hit? One official blew the whistle. It looked like maybe it I was really. It's hard to tell from my vantage point. I thought Pedigo had the basketball. And they're asking for the officials to come over. Lauren Lee going to go down to the end line. Let's see here. We'll listen in. So an inadvertent whistle, and the Lady Tigers had the basketball. I'm trying to get the – Josh Epperson is the one upset, so that – but there's 1.9. It hit the rim. 1.9 Campbellsville basketball. Well, how about that? The official said it's 100% my fault. I mean, he just – he owned it, so you like to see that there. Made, it, made a goof. Luby to inbound. Pritchett, right block, shot up. May have been fouled, no call, and that's where the period will come to a close as uh, Pritchett's shot was short and uh, looked like maybe they got her on the wrist. But uh, nonetheless, Campbells will take a four-point lead into the fourth quarter here. It's been a fun one in the Brewers Sports Center in the first half of this Mid-South Conference double dip. We'll step away, take a timeout, come back, and bring you the final ten minutes. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. The National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics is home to over 65,000 student athletes and 250 colleges and universities. The NAIA hosts over 25 championships across North America. Our 21 conferences give out $600 million in athletic scholarships annually. The NAIA prides itself on character-driven athletics. Learn how you can become a part of the NAIA by visiting NAIA.org. This is Ginger High Colvin, head coach of the Lady Tigers. Thanks for following today's coverage of CU Basketball on the Camelsville University Sports Network. Fifty-three forty-nine. Our score: Campbellsville leads Freed Hardeman by four points. Going here to the fourth quarter, the Lady Tigers uh, outdid Freed by two points in the first. The Lady Lions come back and trim away those two points. We're tied at halftime, and then Campbellsville with a twenty to sixteen advantage there in period number three. We'll see if they can hold on here to this lead. Freed Hardeman basketball with Pervine and Satterley on the far side at midcourt to pitch it in. For Campbellsville, they're starting five back out there. Lee, Boyle, Pettigo, Pritchett, and Wilkes. Chumley holds it out front. Satterley pressured by Lee. Off to Pervine. Now White left wing. White off the screen. Chumley out front. Chumley, ooh, almost walked. Here, White backing away. Left side, Satterley. Ten to shoot. Pervine out top. Hands it to Baher. Bar looking for help on the baseline. Pervine nearly cut off. Throws it away. Looking for K.J. White. Ball will go out of bounds, and Campbellsville will get it back here. Lady Tigers. A chance to extend, leading by four. Lauren Lee down on the inline, line, out top. Pritchett. Back to Lee on the right wing. Lee with the jab step. Pritchett straight away. Working in against Pervine out. Lee wide open. Three on the way. Too strong. Rebound taken in by Baher, who will slow down and hand it back to Chumley, who quickly gives it up to Satterley. Chumley kind of looked like, why are you giving it to me? I don't want it. Post quickly finds the guard, Satterley. Satterley holds it left wing, out top off the screen. White can't shoot it. Nice recovery by Boyle. Ten to shoot now as White backs away. Pervine working right side, driving in against Boyle. Throws up an off-balance shot. Again, great defense by Maddie Boyle. Lauren Lee will push. Trailer, Wilk, same spot, three on the way. That is hard. And the rebound taken in by Pervine. Wilkes hit a three earlier in the second half from that same exact location. That one just a bit too strong. It remains a four-point Campbellsville lead. White works around the screen, and we're going to have a push here called on Maddie Boyle. Uh, 
First on Boyle, first on the Lady Tigers. Left side, Pervine, the basketball will hold and wait for Satterley. And inside, we've got a whistle here away from the basketball. This will go against Wilkes as somebody for Freed Hardman fell down. Satterley out front ball deflected and uh, goes out of play on the far sideline. Pedigo got a hand on it. 8.09 to play in the basketball game. And checking the foul call here. Saturday to inbound here as they came over to, to clarify the foul call from a moment ago on Wilkes. Right side, White, 12 to shoot. Chumley, the ball fake. Now Baher works off the Chumley screen. Inside, throws up a floater with the right hand. Good for Madison Barr. It's back to a two-point game. Campbellsville the advantage. Lauren Lee bounces left side on the wing. Boyle. Pritchett inside. Wilkes back out. Lee at the elbow will drive in. Spins. Kicks. Open is Pritchett. Can't shoot it. Now the elbow. Jay on the way. Good for Courtney Swishit. 55-51. Barr holds it. Chumley straight away. Right wing Satterley. Crossover working against Lee. Pervine. To the left side, hands it to White. She wants to dribble in, now backs away, nearly lost her dribble. Nine to shoot, Chumley wanted a back door, not there. Baher working around the Chumley screen, rolling, throwing it away. Lee, the basketball for Campbellsville. No numbers, Lee gonna work, right side bump, goes up the shot, no good. And Chumley the rebound, a lot of contact, no call. Chumley to Pervine who walked. Pervine took one big step, then took off again. It was like, I think initially, Reagan Pervine was trying to catch that and work her way beyond the three-point arc. She realized that even with that large step, didn't get there, so then decided just to take off and go to the rim and uh, ultimately called for the travel. 55-51 the score. Campbellsville the advantage. Pritchett out front. Lee on the wing. Reed Hardeman switching just about everything here. Pedigo was fouled by Pervine as she reached in. Easy call there. Pervine whacks the arm of Bailey Pedigo. First on Freed Hardeman as a team in this period as Reagan Pervine picks up her second. Baseline out of bounds for CU. Pitching it in. Open was Boyle. Wouldn't shoot it. Rolling Lee gets it from Pedigo. Shot up. Won't go. Pervine going to pick up another foul here. Bad string for Reagan Pervine. She had that turnover and then comes down on this end of the floor and uh, picks up a couple of quick fouls here. Fleming will enter for Pervine. Lauren Lee to the free throw line here for the Lady Tigers. Long pause here for Lee. Free throw on the way is hard off the back of the iron. On the season, Lee at 82.5%. One more coming her way, and that one is good. So uh, she gets one of two. It's a five-point Campbellsville advantage. 6.20 to play in our ball game. Satterley and the two uh, two different shoes. I guess it's a, it's a pair of shoes, but one is white and one is black. Bar. Off the end line, out top, Fleming can't shoot it, drives in. Baher wide open as two Lady Tigers run into one another, and Madison Baher having a game for the ages. Baher with five threes in this game today, five of seven shooting. On the wing, Boyle, three on the way, the answer. Bang, Maddie Boyle and Edward Jones pay out. 59-54. Boyle's first points of the game coming a good time. Satterley 
Out front, Chumley. A couple of dribbles, still on the dribble. At the elbow, hands it back to Barr. Satterley to Chumley. 10 to shoot, hands it back. Maybe a moving screen, no call. Wilkes going to get the rebound of the missed Barr three. Barr got that up quickly. Pettigo bounces left side, right in front of the Lady Tiger benches Lee. She'll drive inside, right hand scoop shot. Good for Lauren Lee. Campbellsville's largest lead of the afternoon here at seven points, less than five minutes to play. 61-54. This has been a slugfest here. White out front working off the bower, uh, bar screen. Campbellsville will go under it. Now right side. Fleming working against Pedigo. Contested runner is good. It's the lay-in for Fleming is on the mark. And it's a five-point game here. As a timeout taken by Coach Josh Epperson. And this will be a... Uh, Coach Epperson thought that would be a media, but I still don't understand the uh, rules. The I'm not smart enough to figure them out, and it's been three years. But uh, Coach Epperson's going to take a full if it's not a media. So either way, we have a, a full stoppage. We'll step away. 61-56, Lady Tigers lead it. You're following the Lady Tigers with 437 to play on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. The call of today's sports cast has been made possible by CPR Cell Phone Repair. Boasting a selection of pre-owned phones, tablets, and more, CPR is not just an electronics repair shop. CPR Cell Phone Repair on the web at cellphonerepair.com. A gift from Campbellsville Baptist Church has made this broadcast possible. Sunday school starts at 9.15. Worship service starts at 10.30. On the web at campbellsvillebaptistchurch.com. Complete coverage of Lady Tiger basketball continues on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Okay, okay. So that's helpful information. Talking about uh, Matt Payton back with you here in Henderson, the uh, gentleman working the scorer's table. And this may be why we get this from time to time. The uh, There's that floater in the third quarter that any the, a timeout taken prior to five minutes becomes a media. So that is, it's kind of the standard practice there, but every now and then you get one in the fourth quarter. And I guess the reason that is, is that gentleman said, if it's ne- if it never hits, if there's only the one stoppage under five, no timeouts, then it goes to the fourth quarter. So that's why every so often you get that fourth quarter media before uh, the five minute mark in the fourth, which is good to know. That's, I guess, a bit of information that I had been missing previously back to work here the lady tigers with the basketball lauren lee on the drive working against kj white out and one for lauren lee you could tell lee kind of put her head down got to the middle she was going to take that shot working against kj white and lauren lee sinks it in the paint and she'll go to the nail free throw good for Lauren Lee and the Lady Tigers' largest lead of the day here at eight points. Satterley motions the offense. Left wing, Baher with it. She's had a terrific day. Baher driving in against Pritchett, cut off, spins back. Pedigo takes it away. Pedigo racing the other way, needs help. She's wanting a timeout. Ginger High Calvin jumps out onto the floor and the Lady Tigers will take a 30-second timeout here with 3.58 as I look up at Miranda Denny just grinning from ear to ear. I think she was giggling about what happened on the court there. Bailey kind of slid through to uh, get that possession. And with 3.58 here, Campbellsville will meet about it right in front of their bench to uh, discuss this offensive possession, the turnover by Freed Hardeman. They've taken pretty good care of the basketball today, just eight turnovers in the game. For Freed Hardeman, that one, however, a costly one here in the late stages as uh, Campbellsville has posted to this point just five points off turnovers. Rebounding, Freed Hardeman with the one rebound advantage, that one coming on the offensive end. Both teams have 20 defensive rebounds in today's basketball game. Freed Hardeman, 11 of 25 from three-point range today. That has been a big story, certainly helped their effort here in keeping this thing close. Lauren Lee has it here for CU. Navigates far side of the floor. 
Lee wanted Pritchett on the entry. It's not there. Now Hazer. Lee will cut. Pritchett backing in. Takes the follow-away shot. No good. Ball batted up. Oh, my. What a foul on Caitlin Wilkes here as she jumped. Now the official motions, the, she hit her in the head, but Wilkes just tapped that ball out. 340. It would have been a Lady Tiger rebound had they called the foul as Wilkes smacked it out. I think Pettigo was there to grab it. White going to dribble back away from the screen now. Chumley straight away. 64-56. Less than three and a half to go. Chumley out front. Catches. White off the screen from Baher. Irvine will take a contested three over Pettigo. This ball short off to the right and will go out of bounds. Campbellsville will get it back with 315. Campbellsville crosses midcourt here with 310 to go. Lauren Lee on the dribble, far side, bounces to Pritchett who faces up. Pritchett wants Wilkes, Lee in there to set a screen. Wilkes has it now, back out, Pritchett open, three on the way. That is no good, and the rebound comes out to Pervine. Satterley will push. Pritchett left that one short. Satterley on the dribble, crosses over, tries to get around Lee. Shot good for Rachel Satterley, impressive move for the freshman, 64-58. Saturday, probably uh, at this moment, the odds-on favorite for conference freshman of the year. She redshirted last season here at Freed Harder. Lee to Boyle. Now on the wing right side, Pedigo, Boyle again, Lee. Nine seconds to shoot, Pritchett catches. Lee, Pritchett out. Three seconds, Lee, jumper off the elbow, around and out, no good. Chumley couldn't handle it. Wilkes just didn't realize he got poked free. Freed Hardman out of there with it. Less than, nope, just over two minutes here to play, actually. White will drive in, throws up a shot over the top of Wilkes with two minutes even. It's a four-point game. Campbellsville, the basketball. They'll call out the offensive set. Who do the Lady Tigers go to for a bucket here, trying to protect that number four ranking? Lee working in, back out. Pedigo wants the entry to Wilkes. Hazard, double team comes. Extra pass, Boyle in the corner, three. Bang! Naughty Boyle again! And Edward Jones, three, back to a seven-point game. Her granddad, John King, on the far side here. He was my chauffeur yesterday. We had to get the call sheets printed and all that good stuff. Got it taken care of thanks to him. Inside Satterley gonna throw one up in some traffic. Goes through, draws the foul. And I believe they call that on Bailey. Two on Bailey, four on the Lady Tigers. Satterley at the line here for the three-point trip, and that free throw no good, pops out. 67-62, we'll see how Coach Epperson handles this as we are now less than 70 seconds to play. Lee out front, Freed Hardman may be playing for one more stop, then you look at potentially extending the game. Lauren Lee, the crossover on the end line, feeds one, Pritchett splits the fenders and one for Courtney Pritchett! She draws the foul, working against K.J. White, and she'll go to the free throw line to extend once again. She can match the Lady Tigers' largest lead at eight. Pritchett in the ball game with 11, an even dozen would be nice. Entered play with 919 career points. She's at 930 right now. She creeps closer to the 1,000-point club. And that one helps. 70 to 62 the score. 54 and a half seconds remaining. Lee steps towards Satterley to force her to pick up the basketball. Works right side of the lane against Pedigo Satterley with another difficult finish and a timeout taken by Coach Josh Epperson here quickly with 45.3 seconds remaining in the basketball game. This is a 30 second timeout. 70 to 64 the score. This has been a fun one here today. And Reed Hardman has cooled ever so slightly. I say that and almost uh, scare myself to do it. They've missed their last couple of three-point attempts uh, at halftime. Reed Hardman 
was 7 of 17 here in the second half, just 4 of 9. So uh, they've not been quite as uh, good just in terms of total output. The percentage still pretty good, but uh, they've not hit the uh, number. The volume hasn't been there in the second half of play. Possession arrow favors Campbellsville here, in case you were wondering. Two timeouts each way as uh, that must have been uh, well, that was a full timeout. Both teams stayed up, though. They called 30. Seems like it was forever. Campbellsville basketball on the far end. They'll have to inbound and come the entire distance here. We'll see if uh, Freed Hardman goes with some pressure. Lauren Lee to inbound. Boyle sprints to her. Not there. Now gets it to Boyle. Boyle working around Baher. A chance here for an easy one. Boyle going to slow down. Has Wilkes in the middle, but Boyle fouled out top. That would have been an easy two for Caitlin Wilkes. Boyle put her head down, got all the way to the free throw line, and was ran up the backside by Fleming because I thought for a moment they might call steps on Boyle. Fleming's uh, second bonus situation for Campbellsville here with 39.4 seconds remaining. Boyle's free throw here is good. Maddie Boyle. Scoreless in the first half. She has seven in the second half. That free throw good. Two Edward Jones threes for the transfer from Kentucky Wesleyan. Satterley right side, eight points the margin. She's picked up her dribble, needs some help. White inside, back out. Satterley contested three on the way. No good. Nally the rebound for CU, and she's fouled. Somebody's fouled. And the foul will go against Pervine. That's four now on Reagan Pervine. And Maddie Nally will go to the free throw line here for the Lady Tigers. Two shots coming her way. One of two would give Campbellsville their largest lead. Not necessarily important at this stage, but it would extend with just 26.4 seconds remaining. Free throw, good. Beautiful for Maddie Nally. I see her dad, Joe, up there. I don't see Maddie's uh, mom, Linda, here this afternoon, but she gets a couple of big ones here, and it's a 10-point Lady Tiger advantage now. 74-64, your count, and a full timeout taken by... Actually, I'm not sure who took that timeout. We'll check that in a moment. It was actually uh, Freed Harden took the uh, timeout. Josh Epperson and his club will discuss some things. 26.4 remaining. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Citizens Bank and Trust has provided funding to make today's sportscast possible. The CBTKY mobile app can be found in the App Store or Google Play. Citizens Bank and Trust says go Tigers. Member FDIC. We acknowledge Kellner Contracting for their continued support of Tiger Athletics. Featuring Tempstar heating and cooling products, Kellner Contracting proudly offers free estimates on new systems. On the web at kellnercontracting.com. Complete coverage of Lady Tiger basketball continues on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. 74-64, the Lady Tigers leading. 26.4 seconds remaining. They've outdone Freed Hardeman by six points here in the fourth quarter thus far. It's a four-point lead heading to the fourth period. And Freed Hardeman running out of chances here with... Uh, Less than 27 seconds to play. Satterley to inbound. Let's see if they get it to Barr. She's had the hot hand. Satterley falling inbounds. Just had to let it go. Barr retreats by the... Ooh, they may have gotten away with a carry. The official turned back up. But Barr to go all the way to the free throw line on the Lady Tiger in. Takes a contested three over Pritchett. Ball knocked out of bounds. And they're going to stay with Freed Hardeman here as Pedigo had it poked free. But uh, Pritchett did a nice job closing out there. May have even got a piece of that. Reed was lucky to avoid the turnover at the outset of that entry. Find Fleming here. She'll drive left side of the lane, working against Pedigo. She gets the lay-in with 13.4 seconds remaining. Entry here. Boyle goes long to Nally, who will get it across midcourt and just hold it. Seven seconds. Freed Hardeman will back away, and the Lady Tigers in the 17th meeting between these two clubs will pick up the win. Their 12th in this series. This is the 16th meeting. This is their 12th win. And uh, 
Campbellsville University picks up the victory here. 74. Get rid of the red pin. 74. 66. The final score. Campbellsville moves to 17 and 1 on the year. They are now 11 and 1 in conference play. Freed Hardman falls to 13 and 5 on the season as the Lady Tigers sweep the regular season series. They are 8 and 5 in league play. Now are the Lions. We'll step away, take a timeout, 2-minute timeout here and come back and visit with the head coach, look at the final game numbers. You're following Lady Tiger basketball on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. With more than 80 majors and certifications, Campbellsville University offers students an affordable higher education in a Christian setting. Located in the heart of Kentucky, Campbellsville University boasts eight regional centers across the Commonwealth. Our 13 to 1 student professor ratio provides a small classroom environment allowing professors to work closely with the students. To schedule a visit or apply, go online to campbellsville.edu. Come find your calling at Campbellsville University. The National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics is home to over 65,000 student athletes and 250 colleges and universities. The NAIA hosts over 25 championships across North America. Our 21 conferences give out $600 million in athletic scholarships annually. The NAIA prides itself on character-driven athletics. Learn how you can become a part of the NAIA by visiting NAIA.org. Tiger sports fans, tickets for your favorite in-season Tiger teams are on sale now. On the field or in the gymnasium, Campbellsville University gladly welcomes you. As a reminder for your game day visit, the H&W Sports Shop has all the latest CU apparel. Look for the tickets tab at CampbellsvilleTigers.com and secure your seat today. Champions of Character connects communities and the NAIA championships across the United States. All 26 plus NAIA championship student athletes participate in a teaming up for character activity. These activities are geared toward local communities, youth in schools and community centers. They are an integral part of every NAIA championship annually, impacting more than 25,000 individuals. For more information on character driven collegiate athletics, head to NAIA.org forward slash character. Complete coverage of Lay Tiger basketball continues with the voice of the Tigers, Matt Payton, on the Camelsville University Sports Network. Pike. I'm a Pikeville fan today. Back inside the uh, Brewers Sports Center in Henderson, Tennessee, the Lady Tigers get the win over Freed Hardeman here. Matt Payton with the head coach, Ginger High Colvin, as uh, Campbellsville picks up win number 17 on the year. Coach, uh, <laughs> Freed Hardman, to their credit, they were shooting the lights out early, made things difficult on you guys, but uh, you weathered the storm and really played maybe your best basketball of the day down the stretch. Yeah, I felt like we came out pretty flat. I, I could even tell in the locker room we were a little bit flat and uh, challenged them, but this has been a, a tough schedule for for everybody in the Mid-South, and I think sometimes you just get a little tired and you get mentally not into it as, as you should be, and it showed early. We just didn't make – good coverage and uh they hit they hit you got to give them a ton of credit they hit all kinds of open shots moved the ball well and and we didn't move well and it resulted into a dog fight if you will uh maddie boyle in the first half scoreless but late in the ball game hit a couple of big threes hit some free throws i thought made some really good uh defensive i had some defensive uh, stops down there for you guys uh she was really quiet early but she certainly made an impact the last uh, six eight minutes i think the three she made did that put us up five uh the first one i believe yes and then the second one may have uh may have tied it yeah yeah, may have brought, like, maybe yeah the they, first one tied it and the second one put i know up, both I of her threes were what i would call momentum threes that they had momentum and she came right back down and kind of daggered that momentum and uh like you said she played extremely well and hit some big shots so Kids that can step up and hit those big shots for you, that's a, that's a good thing. Overall, as a team, we weren't good defensively today, weren't outstanding offensively as far as just execution, so it gives us some things to go back and work on. Well, and one big thing, I've kind of pointed it out to you there uh, before we, we got on air here, the, the turnover, the one turnover. So maybe uh, it's, a, it's a game changer, and sometimes you can overlook that category, but mm-hmm. today, as you mentioned, maybe not super crisp offensively. Uh, 
lackadaisical at times, perhaps defensively, but you didn't give any possessions away, and that, that certainly helps. Yeah, that's important because they beat us on the boards, and when we don't win the boards, it's a uh, it's difficult to to uh, let somebody come down and have. Uh, I forget how many offensive rebounds they had the first half, but they had several. I think they had four the first half. And when we give them four more offensive looks, that's a, it's key that we don't come down and turn the ball over. And we settled in with a group there late and didn't sub late um, because we were running man, and I, I felt like they maybe had their, their cuts down. and we So that we were a little fatigued late, uh, not something that I want to do, but something that we did today, and uh, I thought they handled it well. The uh, first half, Kayla Luby comes off the bench, right. pours in nine easy points, it felt like. Caitlin Wilkes had seven in the second half. Uh, mm-hmm. Kate has nine more for you guys. That, again, those two, and we've talked about this throughout the year, but this is a matchup today. Uh, they really excelled. And, and yeah. those easy buckets at times, I call them easy. I know they're really not. They make it yeah. look that way. But, uh, you know, when they're hitting threes and you guys are, are kind of trading three for right. twos threes at times, but you, but you know yours are going in with, with those two down low. Yeah, they work extremely hard. And like you said, they look easy, but I feel like they were – they were heavily contested today. They were. Uh, they had a couple hanging on them every time, and I felt like they they handled it well. Maybe got frustrated a little bit, but when Caitlin comes out and Kayla Luby can come in and just continue that, that's a really good one-two punch to have. And then uh, Madison Barr today, coach. Uh, you know, you look at the numbers, and you know she's a, a solid player, but had that big game uh, for Freed Hardeman hits five three-pointers, and you could tell late they, they were trying to get her the right. basketball. She had the hot hand. I thought you guys did a pretty good job really making it difficult on her the last few minutes. I thought we we came down and we went small, and we were able to switch everything, so that helped some. And um, we, we still gave up a couple things that we didn't want to give up. You know, with Miranda, she does such a great job with the scout, and there's not many secrets when we play anybody. She's got everybody figured out, and uh, we were a little frustrated a couple times because there's some coverage we should have had. But, we didn't have, but they're a good team. They do a really good job. Uh, got some very nice players and obviously some very nice shooters. So it's not a game that we should have come down here and just walked away with. They they made us earn it, that's for sure. Coach, congratulations on the win. We'll do it again next week in the Pound Center. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate Always you guys nice traveling. I know. We're ready to be home. Absolutely. Thanks, Coach.